takes two of the points I want to make that are, I think, connected. Um, the one is, fun to be with or die for his country. And the other is, don't broadcast, collaborate. So in her 2006 novel, Dreams of Speaking, Australian writer Gail Jones introduces a writer, Alice Black, who's planning a book on what she calls the unremarked beauty of modern things, of telephones, airplanes, computer screens and electric lights, of television, cars, and underground transportation. Even as another character reminds her that the difficulty with celebrating modernity is that we live with so many persistently unmodern things. Dreams, love, babies, illness, memory, death. So how we negotiate between and across what Alice thinks of as the modes of yesterday and today is the persistent task of the humanities. And how we accomplish that task is being revolutionized by the new tools available to us for developing stronger transnational research communities and for sharing our work in progress across previously closed barriers. So I'm picking up on the more utopian dimensions of the paper we've just heard. Dreams of Speaking is a novel in which words provide an anchor in a continuously buzzing world, where books provide an ordered refuge from the galaxies of information available in an internet cafe. Alice's friend wonders how she could both love technology and hate the internet. This makes me ask, what is it about the web and social media in particular that makes some humanists cautious about embracing its potential? for advancing our research, our learning, and our teaching. Where is caution justified? And where are opportunities that we are missing mm -hmm. for advancing our work and extending its reach? The chief worry, I think, is that social media were not created to facilitate research, nor to advance the work of genuine knowledge creation. Quite the opposite. We make it work for us, at least for now, but it will only serve our needs imperfectly until we get more involved in designing systems that are better suited to our work. Social media are designed to deliver consumers to the businesses that want their custom. <coughs> they can be used against the grain, but we need to remember how they work <coughs> and why. A 2010 cyber report on social media and research workflow lists 14 key findings that provide a useful picture of the current state of affairs. Number eight is important for members of ACUTE in this regard. It says, the most popular tools used in a professional research context tend to be mainstream anchor technologies or household brands like Skype, Google Docs, Twitter, and YouTube. <coughs> Researchers seem to be largely appropriating generic tools rather than using specialist or custom-built solutions. And both publishers and librarians need to adapt to this reality. Is this a sign, they ask, that there may be a gap in the market for simple, bespoke tools? Well, those of you working more centrally in the digital humanities may be best placed to consider this question and meet this challenge. But we all need to think about it more carefully uh, Susan Brown, I think, makes this case very well in her chapter in Dan Coleman and Smaro Cambarelli's 2011 book, Retooling the Humanities. Susan argues, what we need is to distinguish our particular user communities and test the tenets of usability studies to figure out how to design systems that will really work for and with us. So if your user community is transnational, <coughs> interdisciplinary, multilingual, and intergenerational, as mine increasingly is, then these interactions can create tremendous energy and new ways of thinking about problems old and new. Shiva Vaidyanathan, in his book, The Googleization of Everything and Why We Should Worry, notes the downside of relying on Google and similar instruments rather than creating search engines better designed to meet our knowledge worker needs. And he argues for taking a leadership position on knowledge dissemination. In the face of the fracturing of knowledge encouraged by Google and social media, he concludes there is a need for scholars to conceive of a human knowledge project 
that can reclaim